James Alloway was born in Alabama and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. In high school, he was one of the leaders at John Hay High School during a major student protest in November 1968 and February 1969. In this interview, he discusses his upbringing, coming of age in the Glenville neighborhood, the student protest at John Hay High, and his life after graduating from high school. Okay, today is June 15, 2022. I am Aaron Fountain speaking with James Alloway. Okay, James, so my first question that I love to ask everybody is, um, can you tell me about yourself? When and where were you born, raised, your parents, and the neighborhood you grew up in? Hmm. Um, I was born in the South. I was born in uh, Alabama, very small town that doesn't even appear on the map. Um, it's a city that's outside of Troy, Alabama. A lot of people know Troy because at one point, Troy State, um, gained some national prominence in, in basketball, beat a couple of Division One schools. And so people know Troy, but Troy is the big city outside of the big city that I was born in. So I was, spent my first uh, five years of life in uh, rural uh, Alabama. Uh, the great, great grandson of a, uh, uh, a slave, and uh, we moved to Cleveland, Ohio in the uh, early 50s. Um, grew up in Cleveland, uh, neighborhood um, 105th and Superior. Um, and um, moved around the, uh, the country since then, living in uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Detroit, New York. And uh, I now currently uh, split my time between a home in uh, Chicago and a home in uh, um, Florida. Okay. Uh, wait, what did your parents do for a living? Um, they both had many jobs, multiple jobs. Uh, again, coming from uh, rural Alabama, um, they, uh, as part of the, the Great Migration, um, they um, they didn't have a lot of skills, so the, they took whatever jobs they could. Usually, working two, sometimes three jobs uh, at a time. Uh, they both uh, drove uh, city cab. Uh, my father also worked at um, a hospital as a, a porter. And uh, my mother was uh, a seamstress. So at one point she was a cab driver, a seamstress, and um, um, a beautician. And um, uh, my father worked his two jobs at the same time. And we lived a good life, you know. I'm, I'm not going to, um, uh, to uh, say we... we, we struggled, uh, but um, it, um, it came at the price of, of them working uh, 10 or 12 hours a day. Hmm. Okay, and um, I'm curious, how was um, Glenville in the 1950s? I've been through that neighborhood plenty of times. fights, fist fights. You know, if somebody introduced a knife, it was like 
you know, you, you breached the, the, the local gang etiquette, you know, you, mm -hmm. you don't do knives. Um, but um, uh, that was uh, the Glenville neighborhood. Uh, so I grew up in, again, 105th and Superior, which was, um, we didn't really have a, a, a name like Glenville. It was just 105th and Superior. Uh, it was um, a, a, a great neighborhood because it was um, uh, a movie theater. Uh, there was um, um, uh, thriving um, uh, black businesses, mm -hmm. um, uh, great uh, pool rooms. I shot a lot of pool myself, so I hung out in the pool rooms. Uh, and uh, it, was, um, it was a great place to be. I mean, it was uh, a, a sense of security and, and family. Um, it was a real uh, traditional neighborhood where people looked out for each other. If you did something wrong and the neighbors saw you, then they were going to put you in check. Mm -hmm. They might they might beat your butt. <laughs> they had to tell your mom uh, what you did, and then you, you got another butt beaten from your mom. And... and uh, it was, you know, it was uh, a situation where everybody looked out for each other. Oh, okay. So, um, okay, I, I do want to jump ahead a little bit. So I remember we was talking, you told me about the um, Huff riots that kind of serve as like an empowerment for, for the students. So what are your memories of that um, incident? Um, well, the, the, the riots... Um, they hit different neighborhoods simultaneously. I mean, it, 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 most people were, think of it as the, as the Huff riots, but you know, there were there were pockets of of of, of rioting going on in Huff, uh, in Glenville, um, uh, in Cedar, and uh, also on on 105th. Uh, the thing that I remember most about it was. Um, um, the helicopters flying in the air, shining lights down. Um, you know, there were fires burning, and, and um, I had some friends who came by my house and you know said, "Hey, man, let's 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 go out, let's 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 get it." <laughs> and um, it, um, it it really wasn't. Oof what I was about in terms of the looting uh -huh. um, because up, up to that point I was a fairly disciplined individual I, I, I did a lot of um, uh, volunteer work with uh, CORE the Congress of Racial Equality and NAACP and some other things and so our focus was uh, more targeted we we were trying to achieve something uh, whereas the the looting was just folks that were going out to get it. So I remember the fires, and, and, and uh, I remember uh, people uh, showing up with new outfits that they they got, and, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. Um, it really wasn't as um, objective oriented as. Um, it should have been. Mm -hmm. I think um, um, it did certainly achieve a, a major purpose, which was to um, uh, make people aware that there's a problem, you know, uh, and, and, and we're tired of, of, of uh, uh, not being heard, and, and if you're not going to hear us one way, you're going to hear us another way. Um, so, in, in 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 that regard, it, it certainly um, achieved its purpose. Um, but in terms of having uh, a, a, a clear set of objectives, we're going to do this until this happens. Uh, we need this change to occur and if this change doesn't occur we're going to do this and we're going to continue to do this until we get what we want those things were weren't a part of the uh, the riots and, and you know, there was a certain 
there was a certain sense of pride that that did come with 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 the riots, because I remember some other big cities that didn't have riots uh, or didn't have major riots, and, and it was you know kind of well like um, why aren't you guys participating in this? You know there was there was the Watts riots and, 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 and the Cleveland. Um, minor things uh, in Detroit, but, you know, it, it just was odd to me at that point why uh, it wasn't um, happening on a national level. It was just these uncoordinated, uh, poorly focused efforts. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to go back. You said you worked with CORE, so I'm kind of curious. What did you do with CORE? When I first started, um, um, well, I don't know if it's, it's correct to say working with them because, you know, working implies getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was, I, was, I was a kid, you know, when I, I, I first uh, got involved with them. Uh, initially, I was involved with the NAACP, um, and uh, we just, you know, did youth products, uh, youth projects. Um, we uh, helped out with uh, voter registration, um, uh, food drives, uh, uh, working with uh, youth summer programs, and, and and different things like that. And uh, then with CORE, uh, it was essentially the same thing. And I don't remember uh, why or how I transitioned from the NAACP to, to CORE, uh, but uh, I was, you know, doing um, kind of the same things there. Um, and uh, after a period of time, um, maybe when I was uh, maybe 15 or 16 or something like that, um, I began to... Um, participate in some of the um, um, uh, evening sessions where they would um, uh, move around the city and and um, talk to groups and then I would um, speak from a, a youth perspective about uh, what's going on the need to organize and, and you know it, my involvement took on a more um, a public role as opposed to just uh, being a, a, a foot soldier. Uh, and um, uh, eventually, um, uh, the, um, the director of the Cleveland chapter of, of CORE um, put together a, a, a small program uh, that I ran um, in uh, uh, in Cleveland, it was um, again a, a neighborhood-based program, um, and um, working with youth, um, and we would um, do uh, after-school programs and uh, just different things working with youth. Hmm. Okay, that was interesting. I know CORE and NAACP are kind of, you know, different. NAACP being more middle class, you know, right. respect, respectability, and then the CORE being more, resonated more with the working class. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And really, I, I, I wanted to uh, uh, eventually get involved with uh, uh, SNCC, mm-hmm. uh, but um, never did. Um, I, I thought that they were they were putting the message out there the way it needed to be um, out there. Like um, uh, we um, we see these as being key issues. Uh, we see these issues as being uh, non-negotiable, and. Um, we're willing to fight and die for these issues. Um, so SNCC and the Black Panthers, they, they were on a, they were on a, uh, a much more ag- ag- aggressive, high adrenaline, high octane.
maintain kind of a of a uh, of a, an agenda. Hmm. But I never, I never, um, I never got there. So my my thought process was more uh, Malcolm X than it was uh, Martin Luther King. Okay, and that happened gradually over the course of time. Uh, I, I think it was uh, uh, it was a, 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 a gradual transition. Okay, so that does lead me to the uh, the student protest that occurred at um, John Hay, which I, I know, like going through newspaper clippings, dealt with the quality of the school. So, can you describe like the physical condition of the school as well as the um, culture? Um, John, John Hay. Uh, was uh, originally an all-girls school, mm-hmm. um, and um, I think uh, the the focus of John Hay was initially to uh, train women uh, to uh, become uh, secretaries. Uh, you know, they stenography and you know typists, and you know those were the 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 primary things that they 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 focused on. Um, it wasn't about uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, take a student to his or her uh, maximum potential to identify what uh, the potential is and, 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 and move them along. It was about, you know, creating this, this workforce, uh, labor force. Um, it was, um, I think, a total student enrollment of maybe either 1,200 or, uh, I don't think it was 1,800. It was a small school compared to, like, Glenville or or John F. Kennedy or some of the other schools around. So it was, it was a small school. The um, fact that it was a small school meant that we were really very close-knit. Uh, we um, uh, we were like a, a family. Uh, the school had very limited resources in terms of, of what a lot of the other schools offered. No swimming pool. Um, uh, it, just about everything in the school was was, was old and dated, um, and so it, it it just wasn't uh, a to say it wasn't cutting edge is is, is an understatement. Um, it it wasn't anywhere near what um, the other schools um, offered. Um, I, I I was in the band. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first started to play uh, in the band. I didn't have a uniform, you know, I, I didn't have a, a, a uniform to march in, um, just because, you know, they, they didn't have any. Um, and, and so we didn't have a lot of the, the resources the other schools had. Um, um, I think, um, um, one of the, 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 the real, uh, tipping points for us, though, was um, um, we began to organize uh, um, a um, black student uh, association, Afro-American society, um, and we got pushback on it, uh, even though there were other uh, clubs there. So there was a chess club and a, I was a member of the chess club, but the chess club only had like three people that were members <laughs> and there were other, there were other clubs and, you know, they didn't, su- they wouldn't support an African American society. Hmm. And, and there were other little issues that were annoying. Um, um, and, 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 and they weren't really so little because they pointed to the differences between uh, being black and, and uh, the Cleveland public school system and being white in the Cleveland public school system. Um, and and this, this was a point that I made when you and I spoke the other day uh, about uh, they were trying to uh, 
prevent us from having afros mm-hmm. um they and i don't know if if this they had a um a requirement that um your hair couldn't be any longer than and i don't remember the the the, the length but it couldn't be longer than three inches or two inches or or or, or, or some arbitrary number um but the way they, they, they measured our hair versus measuring uh, the white students' hair was, was really very different because the white students' hair uh, would lay flat. So, you know, uh, uh, six inches on, on a white student's hair would still be flat hanging down on his head, whereas six inches on a black student's hair is going to be sticking straight up. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if that was... Uh, something that they came up with uh, in response to um, uh, us wearing afros or if that was something that always existed. It's hard for me to believe that it always existed because, you know, it's such a obscure thing to, to, to build into the dress code. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, you know that that and 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 uh, the uh, Africa uh, Afro American Society thing just uh, became the tipping point, and you know, we just said enough is enough, and um, uh, we began to um, to protest, um, and um, when when we did protest it, we. We recognized that it was uh, with some uh, potential costs, some potential consequences, um, and maybe youth, maybe being young and, and youthful, uh, we didn't fully weigh the the, the the value of those consequences because, you know, for most of us, we were seniors and uh, we uh, were looking towards the future. And um, this this could have a, a, an impact on our future, but in spite of those consequences, we decided we, we would move forward. Um, and 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 to be perfectly fair about it, um, um, as we as we thought about uh, what we were going to do and, and and looked at strategies for uh, what needed to happen. Um, we did have support from uh, a couple of the uh, faculty members, um, one in particular, and I, I hesitate to mention his name, um, um, uh, but um, one of the faculty members, uh, a, 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 a young black man, uh, and his age was probably a lot closer to, to our age than I realized because, you know, um, he had just graduated from college and this was his first teaching assignment. Uh, but at any rate, uh, we met with him um, a couple of times uh, uh, to talk about strategy, to talk about, you know, what, uh, how we ought to approach this. And, and uh, he was a, a supporter of our um, um, creating the uh, Afro-American Society, uh, so so that was you know that was one of the the, the, the things that helped us to uh, to move forward with it. Okay, yeah, I was looking at um, yeah, I look at some of my notes. I know other grievances included you know, bad cafeteria food, poor maintenance of lavatories, and inadequate science equipment. And of course, locks on a door and security guards, which cost like a thousand dollars per day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you have those notes because <laughs> I don't remember all of the details. And um, the um, uh, the list included some some things that um, were um, kind of peripheral issues. Um, the main the, the main two things were again. Uh, they were trying to suppress who we were uh, with the Afros, and um, uh, they were trying to uh, prevent us from having our um, African American society. Hmm. And if we could, if we could uh, achieve.
achieve those two primary goals, the other things would be, um, you know, just like um, the icing on the cake. I candidly don't remember the 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 condition of the, of the bathroom. <laughs> you know, being being a male, you know, we we tend to have low low standards <laughs> and minimum minimal requirements for the bathroom anyway. Um, but um, I do remember the cafeteria food being uh, kind of questionable. <laughs> but um, uh, okay, yeah, it doesn't elaborate, but it did say security guards were arrogant and got fresh with female students. That that's what the, the grievance is listed. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay, I'm trying to see what else where I was going. Uh, oh, yeah, so to, to my understanding from the research I've done, the genesis, the, the spark of the um, protest in November 68 started with a new disciplinary policy that suspended students for tardiness and lottering. I don't know if you remember that exactly. Uh, I, I, I don't remember it um, 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 specifically. Uh, but uh, I do remember that they were um, they were becoming very t to step back a moment this this was during a period when um, corporal punishment was uh, still a part of the um, uh, the school culture um, it was um, standard practice for students to uh, there were three things that that, that happened um, um, well four I guess there was expulsion suspension detentions and SWATs those were those were those were the four um, disciplinary procedures um, and um, <clears throat> you could um, you could in some cases decide whether you wanted to take SWATs or you wanted to accept the detention. Um, and we didn't like the SWATs. Hmm. We, we, to, to have someone hit you on the butt with a paddle as hard as they can, you know, two or three times, um, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty primitive. Um, I, I'm sure, I'm not positive, but I'm, I'm relatively sure um, they never gave women any swats. None of the females got swats. It was just the male students. Mm. So there was pushback about the whole uh, disciplinary program. Um, so the the issue of being suspended uh, for a minor infraction was just a part of this whole um, disciplinary uh, procedure that they had in place. Mm -hmm. And after the, uh, the protest, uh, they stopped giving swats. Hmm. Okay. I said, do you re do you remember the um the uh, memories of the first walkout? I know there was like two walkouts. Uh, do you remember the first one? Yeah, I do. Okay. What are your memories of that um event? Because I know that's what led to Linda Fuller to be transferred to East High School. Um. The uh, the first walkout was um, kind of a um. um we weren't sure how successful it was going to be. Uh, we were really very concerned about it uh, because, you know, we, we knew the level of commitment that the core group had, and the core group was uh, maybe um, uh, 15, 20 students. Um, and when we did walk out, um, we were shocked that everybody walked out. Well, I'm sure there were probably some people that stayed behind, but um, um, I would, based 
based on the people that showed up at our meeting point, it, there couldn't have been many people left behind. There was a, um, a, a, a theater uh, that was just around the corner uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the school. And I don't know who it was that negotiated the, uh, the deal to allow us to meet there. Uh, but um, we all went over to the, the theater. And when we got to the theater, uh, there were uh, four or five of us that, um, that spoke to the, to the group um, to um, talk about, you know, the concerns and our commitment to um, to to to, to, um, to stick with this as long as we have to stick with it in order to um, uh, to get what we wanted, and um, it was uh, it was it was it was like really. I felt good about it because I, just like I, I mentioned, the um, the riots mm-hmm. um, tend to be tended to be um, unfocused. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt that we were very focused because um, not only did the people look at this as an opportunity to to, to not be in school, um, they could have just went home. Mm. But they didn't go home. They came over to the um, the theater, and we sat in that theater, and we talked about issues, and and we discussed them back and forth amongst ourselves. You know, the, the, again, we had um, um, maybe five people on stage who, who presented, and then we discussed things back and forth between the group. Um, the, the audience, you know, um, I, I can't call them audience because we're all part of the same thing. It's just some pe- five people are sitting on the stage, and a, a thousand people are sitting in seats in in, in the, you know, the, the general seating. Mm-hmm. So they're not the audience; they're participants, just like we're all participants. And you know, questions are asked, discussions going on, and we were in that theater for, you know, two or three hours talking about things. And so it was, it was really a very, um, refreshing, um, uh, feeling for me because I felt like we were, we were really about taking care of business as opposed to, uh, here's an excuse for me to, you know, be out of school for the day. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, I don't, do you remember when um, Linda was transferred? Because I know that was a common tactic among school administrators to expel, suspend, or transfer students they deemed troublemakers. Do I remember? I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand your question. Say it again, oh, please. do you remember when, um, you know, do you remember how Linda was transferred, Linda Fuller? L- L- Linda was not transferred. Oh, okay. L- Linda, Linda was... Um, she she stayed at John A and she graduated as part of the group. There were some other people that were transferred. I don't I don't remember who the individuals were. Um, uh, as <clears throat> excuse me, I don't I don't think they went to East High. I thought they transferred them to. I can't remember now, but I, I didn't think it was East High that they transferred them to. But uh, yeah, there, 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 was, there was another school uh, that was um, um, not even close to John A. And, and so people were were they were they were transferred. Mm-hmm. Um, as I mentioned to you um, uh, when we spoke the other day, uh, there, there was one person. It was the strangest thing. 
this is some as, as, as I said before, John Hay was a very small school. Mm -hmm. uh, total enrollment was, I don't know, 1,200, 1,800. I think it was close to 1,200. Our graduating class was only um, 118 students, so it's a small school. Uh, but a guy popped up that now is, 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 is active in trying to help us organize the uh, Black Student Alliance and, and some things. I didn't, I never knew him before. He's suddenly there. And then after uh, everything um, kind of uh, quieted down, he, suddenly he, was, he wasn't there anymore. And his image was scrubbed from every photograph that he would have been in. Um, he it was like he was never there. He was a ghost. Hmm. And that was that was um, very odd. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I do, I remember you, you were talking that you asked me Linda was your then girlfriend. So I was curious, how was she as a person? Because she seemed to be pretty active on campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Linda was, um, uh, Linda was also a member of the band. Um, Linda was, um, um, and she was a, a very attractive young lady with uh, long uh, brown hair mm -hmm. that hung down uh, past her shoulders. During the time that she and I uh, were boyfriend and girlfriend, um, we were both very political, uh, both in school and out of school, Linda cut off all of her hair hmm. um, because she was a, a very attractive woman. Um, she was um, still very attractive without her hair, but um, she didn't want to be defined by this traditional, um, this is what um, black women should look like. Um, this is uh, the um, our effort to uh, look like white women. Uh, she she kicked that to the curb, cut off all of her hair, and had a very short afro. So she and I both had uh, matching afros. Hmm. And this was at a time when um, guys having afros was um, um, shocking. Um, and, and she had an afro. Um, and so she was really, really very cutting edge. She was all about the movement. Um, I remember uh, there was one occasion where we were doing some voter registration work uh, and Linda and I were going through the community and, and this little uh, little old black lady, she said, uh, excuse me, boys, uh, but could you tell me? And, you know, Linda was so gracious. Um, she didn't she didn't correct the lady. Uh, she just turned around and um, uh, gave her the information that the, the lady was looking for. And I don't know if the lady recognized that she was, in fact, you know, talking to a, uh, a, a beautiful young black woman mm -hmm. or not, but it was, you know, that, that was Linda. She was um, uh, always positive uh, and uh, very, very uh, respectful of, of the elders within the community. Uh, but um, she, um, she was, uh, working hand in hand and, and prepared to do whatever was necessary. Uh, we weren't a violent you know, group, uh, but I think if, if violence had been necessary, uh, she would have been prepared to shoulder whatever weight uh, she had to shoulder in order to um, um, see the, the, the mission through. Hmm. Okay. Um, wait, before I jump ahead, I was curious. Um, were you aware of the other other protests occurring on at other high schools on the east side? I knew that I knew that there were some other people doing some things. Uh, 
um, our efforts were not coordinated in, 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 that, in that respect. And, I, and uh, you know, if, if we had really had a better network, if we had, you know, um, been aware, that would have been the ultimate thing to do to, um, because our, 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 our protest was not protest against John Hay. We were protesting against the Cleveland public school system. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were making a statement that needed to be responded to by the Cleveland public school system. And if we had uh, had that coordinated um, uh, approach, uh, then I think our voice would have been much louder and uh, it would have, the response would have been much, um, much, uh, much quicker. Uh, but um, I knew that there were some things going on, uh, and n- n- not because we were who we were. Or uh, I, I think I think our protest was the the best uh, of, of 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 the uh, the high school protest. <laughs> it was definitely the uh, most controversial one, and definitely the largest one. <laughs> Okay, I was curious because I, it, yeah, Cleveland, they vary from city to city. Some cities, like, there's student protests at individual schools, but it's all, like, somewhat connected. And others, there's, like, citywide walkouts, like, in Cincinnati and Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, we, uh, we lacked that connectivity. And to be, to be fair about it, um, I suspect that there may have been uh, some pushback had we attempted to approach the other schools because um, John A. was, you know, as I said, it was a very small school. Mm-hmm. And um, I, um, I doubt that the other schools would have felt good about the fact that the tail would be wagging the dog, the smallest school is <laughs> here, t- telling us about what we need to do or trying to coordinate an effort. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now let's lead me to the um the second walkout. So cause I know one thing with the demands is that now the students were asking that Principal Paul be high to resign. Yeah. And yep, yeah, and I know he was only there that was his first year there, so how was he if you if you remember him well? I d I don't remember him well. I do remember that he uh, did not uh, he threatened us. He, he threatened us with when we uh, um, had the first walkout. He threatened us before the walkout. He was not supportive of any of the. Uh, initially, they were requests. Then they were demands. Uh, but he. He was a for, he was an anti force, uh-huh. and uh, we just didn't feel that uh, he was sensitive to uh, the needs of the of the black students. In terms of you know what kind of a, a principal he was, I I don't remember. Uh-huh. Um, you know because. My, my wife um, um, retired from the Chicago public school system. Hmm. Um, I have a daughter that was a teacher. Uh, I have a daughter that that's um, that was a, an associate professor at, at a university. I have um, lots of family members that are in education. And so I understand the role of a principal is something different than um, you know someone who's there to uh, respond to and, and and deal with the needs um, as articulated by the students. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of whether he was a good principal or not, I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that he wasn't. Um, listening to to what we had to say he wasn't hearing what we had to say and if he did hear what we had to say he didn't 
view it as being valid. And so we felt he needed to go. Hmm. Um, and so um, that became <laughs> that became another one of our uh, our demands. Oh yeah, and I don't. You're probably not aware of this, but when I was g- going through the um, doing the research, the, um, the the plane dealer, of course, condemned the protests, and the GOP even tried to attack Carl Stokes <laughs> for the protests. And but even the Colin Post actually um, condemned the protests and blamed it on inactive parents and black nationalists, which are referred to as a, vi- a virus. So I'm kind of curious. Are you were you aware of like the allegations that were um, used against you guys? No. Mm-hmm. No, not, but I, I, I was aware that um, uh, the protest was not um, looked on favorably. Um, um, the, it was as though people could not separate um, The negatives associated with the riots, because um, um, most people, uh, older generation, uh, felt the riots were negative, mm-hmm. um, and um, we should stay in our place. And uh, our, our protests were negative; that we need to stay in our place. Um, so I, I, I wasn't aware of, of the specifics of, of any of their uh, their uh, their views or um, or any of that, but I do know that um, people outside of our generation and people outside of those directly affected saw our protests in a completely different way than those of us who were engaged in the protest. You know, I think um, during that period, um, more people were about uh, the be quiet and be patient, change will come. Mm-hmm. Um, attitude most people had that attitude um, and we were about uh, we've been patient long enough we need change to happen now um, you know how long you know, how long are we expected to endure before you know it becomes too long and um, yeah so I'm I'm, 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 I'm really um, surprised that uh, the uh, call post made an active uh, or, or not active but uh, that they they took a, a, a stance a, 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 a stance against the protest I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that yeah, I think they started taking a more conservative tone after the um, Glenville shootout. And, and you know, a lot of papers were kind of blaming black nationalists for fomenting disorder in the schools. So I think that's kind of what happened after the, uh, riot, the shootout and the riots. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Now, that, that, kind of, that kind of pisses me off because <laughs> when I was about 12 years old, I used to sell the call posts. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go down to, uh, they had a thing where, I think the call post cost, uh, I can't remember now, maybe uh, 10 cents or, or something, but you go down to the call post, uh, anybody, you go down to the call post and you, and you say, uh, give me 20 papers, I'm going to sell the 20 papers. You go out and you sell the 20 papers, uh, you bring the money back. Uh, they get uh, uh, seven cents per paper, and you keep three cents per paper. And that was the distribution model. It wasn't like uh, the Plain Dealer or the Cleveland Press where, you know, they had subscriptions and, you know, uh, and these people, they got the paper every day. Uh, and you know, the paper boy delivered the paper every day. The call post, you know, it was um, just 
years of paper go out and sell it, you know. And uh, I, I sold their paper for them for when I was a kid to make money. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pissed off now <laughs> <laughs> that I was supporting these guys that turned around and, you know, was stabbing us in the back. Yeah, I'm looking at my notes, and it's, it's, the title is called Where Are the Parents? And it, it is, wow. Yeah, yeah, they just it's called like the outside spokesmen of, quote, dubious motivations. They're not taking sides, but they say that too many black parents are inactive and have been inactive with the John Hay um, controversy. Wow, so they, were talking, they weren't talking about me. They were talking about my mama. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, that really pisses me off. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they're trying to walk a fine line, but you can tell they're not really supportive of the protest. They just see it as like a minority of students called depriving uh, most students of their education. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. 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 Well, I mean, the, 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 uh, I, I knew that sentiment exists. We 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 knew that was out there uh, because there were that was a that was a, an opinion that was expressed within. Uh, uh, the, the student body, you know, some people were saying, "Yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do it," you know, because you know, I'm, I'm ready to graduate, and I, you, you're going to mess things up, and you know. But the, as I said before, uh, when when we did march, uh, uh, walk out, um, those people that that expressed those concerns, they were there with us. Mm-hmm. And and when we were at the theater, uh, those people uh, reiterated their, their concerns. They, they they spoke out again because when we were in that theater, it, it wasn't uh, a kumbaya moment where we're all you know uh, of, of of a common uh, uh, opinion about you know what we ought to do. And, you know, there was there was back and forth about what should the next move be. Okay, is this enough? All right. Uh, fun and game's over let's go back you know that that all that was going on there uh so uh i'm not um, I'm, 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 I'm not so naive as to think that you know it was universal mm-hmm. but uh certainly uh, uh the uh, i would have thought the, the black press would have been uh, sophisticated enough to recognize that um, uh, in order to achieve change, there has to be a little pain, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm just oh. surprised. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. So, were you part of the um, when students kind of occupied the um, the school administration building, uh, Superintendent Paul Bridge, to meet him? No. Oh, okay, okay. I know it's like about a hundred and something students who went there to, you know, make demands directly to him. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I, 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 I remember that. And, then, and I don't, I, I don't know uh, what the particulars were. Why I, I, I wasn't uh, involved in that? Uh, because again, as I, I said before, uh, I was the school thing was was um, was. One of the, 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 the things that I was involved in, I was, you know, uh, I was really active with, uh, with CORE, um, and uh, you know, I, I don't know, there may have been something else that I had going on at that point, that, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't remember. I do know that I, do know that I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't part of that occupying group. Okay, um, I'm curious. What was the role of your parents um, when you, during all this? Um, they understood. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, uh, they they had seen, um, or they they were a party to um, my involvement with. Um, with CORE and the NAACP and, and being involved in uh, different marches that, uh, that they organized uh, in uh, the Cleveland area. And I also uh, was involved in uh, some of the activities that uh, CORE had going on in um, 
uh, Pennsylvania, so I was doing some local travel with them, and, and also some, some things down in um, uh, uh, southern Ohio, uh, down at uh, 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 Wilberforce. Uh, so they, th- this, this, this was not um, um, out of character for me to be involved in this, and, and, and they supported me, they understood. Uh, uh, I don't think they uh, fully calibrated um, the negative potential impact, um, because I, quite frankly, hadn't fully calibrated it myself. Fortunately, things worked out well for me in life, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it could have taken a, a, a very different turn uh, very easily. Uh, so uh, they uh, they understood, uh, uh, but uh, to be honest with you, uh, me and my high school protests and so forth wasn't their their biggest concern. They had two sons that were involved in the Vietnam War. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, worrying about whether their two sons were going to come back home uh, was probably uh, a bigger concern, a bigger issue for them than, you know, me and the high school walkout. <laughs> Oh, that is true. Um, yeah, so kind of, um, what, what did you do in the meantime when Hay, Hay, like, closed down for, like, two weeks? I think ten days, actually. Like, do you know what you did in the meantime during that? Mm-hmm. No, I don't. Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't remember. Uh, no doubt. I, I uh, um, was active with uh, um, the work that I was doing with, with CORE. Because, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Um, when when you, you, you look at uh, um, social civil organ, um, organizations now and and what they're doing, uh, uh, a, a lot of that stuff is uh, month to month, uh, maybe week to week. Uh, but back during the '60s, uh, there was there was day-to-day stuff going on. I mean, um, there was, you know, something taking place at, at the, uh, the core office every day. And by the time that uh, we had the school protest, I was also running my, uh, uh, my uh, community program. Uh, the community program is after school and weekends and so forth. Uh, so if, if I had to hazard a guess to try to remember what I was doing, um, I would have no doubt been sharing my time between uh, time over at the court office and time over at uh, uh, my office. I, I had a, uh, an office that was set up at 123rd and Superior. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, 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 after school program it had, it, had, uh, it was brick and mortar and so um, you know I, I was I was there uh, most of the uh, most of the time okay I have well, I have two more questions. I was kind of curious about you say you had two brothers in Vietnam. So, well, how concerned were you about potentially being drafted? Um, I, I wasn't in um, threat of being drafted mm-hmm. at that at that point because you're sixteen, seventeen years old in, mm-hmm. in high school. Uh, but when I graduated from high school and, and, and went to college, uh, you know, everybody had to register for the draft, uh, and I had to register for the draft my uh, freshman year of college. Uh, but as, as it turned out, uh, my freshman year of college, uh, I had an accident with a safety glass door, fooling around with my best friend. I almost cut my hand off 
fortunately they were able to save it and, and uh, with the grace of God everything worked out well but um, for a, a period of time I had limited mobility in my right hand uh, resulting from uh, the injury. And so when I went down to the draft board uh, to register for the draft, uh, they saw that I had limited mobility, would not have been able to uh, operate a, uh, a service weapon. Uh, and they said, ah, well, okay, 4F, you're out of here. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I was not uh, eligible for the draft. Uh, but, you know, back during that period, um, they were drafting people left and right. You know, mm-hmm. the, we were we were part of the um, the uh, the tools of war, the weapons of war. Uh, so, um, but I don't think I don't think any of that would have been in, well. I guess I guess I'm, I'm being naive here because I was going to say I don't think any of that would have been um, uh, impacted by what we were doing. Um, in our protest, but it very easily could have been, you know. Okay, and yeah, my last question I love to ask everybody is, um, yeah, can you talk about your life after high school? Sure, sure. Uh-huh. I, 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 I have been truly, truly blessed. Um, after uh, John Hay, I, I, I went to... Um, uh, Baldwin Wallace College, which is you know just just down the road from uh, John Hay, uh, out by uh, Cleveland Airport. It was a college then, not a university. I think it's now it's Baldwin Wallace University. But um, I went there and uh, uh, continued uh, the organizing ways. Uh, when when I went there with my best friend, and I would be really Miss, if I did not mention my best friend R.J. Stidham, who was uh, shoulder to shoulder with me uh, during the struggles, R.J. went on to uh, become uh, one of the top uh, fair housing lawyers in the country, and did a lot of work with the Obama administration. Uh, R.J. Uh, unfortunately, uh, passed uh, uh, due to cancer about uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, but he was one of the, the brightest minds that, that I had the pleasure of knowing, um, and certainly one of the most committed people that I know, uh, people that are committed to the struggle. R.J. Stedham, and unfortunately, I don't think his name would have appeared in any of the, the things back during that time because he was growing into himself at that point, and uh, uh, his role continued to grow uh, with the passing of time, uh, but he grew to be uh, a very important person in uh, uh, black lives um, because of the work that he did for fair housing. And not just black lives, fair housing applies to black people, white people, brown people, um, but, you know, RJ. But at any rate, uh, I, I went to Baldwin Wallace College. R.J. was there with me, and, and when we got there at Baldwin Wallace College, there was, um, I think, 23 black students uh, there when we arrived. We were a class of about, incoming class of about 45 students or so, uh, and uh, we made some serious changes there. We organized uh, uh, the... Uh, 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 African-American society there at uh, Baldwin Wallace College. Uh, We unfortunately had to do a couple of protests there uh, because of uh, some uh, some racist things that occurred uh, on that campus. But we were agents for change uh, at Baldwin Wallace.
Wallace College as well. So went to Baldwin Wallace College, uh, then left Baldwin Wallace College after two years, went to the University of Pittsburgh, got involved in a, um, uh, a uh, fast track program for uh, getting a, a uh, MBA program uh, at University of Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, uh, I did not complete the MBA program, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, did a lot of work there. Uh, I was involved in um, their uh, uh, intercultural house, which brought together 10 black people from the, uh, uh, the global community with 10 white people from the global community. And by that, I mean uh, black people being um, African-American, African-African, uh, Middle Eastern, uh, 10, uh, and uh, white folks from the U.S. and around the world. So the 20 of us lived in this, this house, the grand house, took care of all the business in the house. It was a fantastic experience. So, uh, and after that, uh, I, uh, I went to corporate America. Uh, I worked in corporate America in, in Pennsylvania, Detroit, New York, and uh, Chicago. Um, I was involved in uh, insurance, um, um, and uh, uh, it was a, an area of insurance where black folks did not exist. Um, working with mining companies, gold mines, copper mines, diamond mines, and I was blessed enough to, to travel around the world three or four times a year. Um, Working with uh, with uh, people, uh, you know, it, it just just fantastic. So that was, and now I I married, wife, three kids, five grandkids, and um, you know I I wouldn't change anything. Okay, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. I, I should have added too. Um, one thing that came out of the John Hay High School protest was that um, the principal actually did resign, and it increased the number of black principals to four out of six predominantly black schools in the city. Mm. Yep. So that's, that's one thing that came out of it. <laughs> well, th- th- that's a, that's that's a tactical thing that came out of it, but hope, hopefully a. a, a bigger strategic thing came out of it and that's the, 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 allowing young people to recognize and know that they have a voice mm-hmm. that 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 they can speak up when when things aren't right or they see issues you know they have a voice and uh, hopefully that kind of strategic thing um, has a much greater impact than just getting rid of one principle. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like I mentioned, uh, we took this thing from John Hay to, to Baldwin Wallace College and uh, these other students that are involved, hopefully they took it to other other institutions, not just uh, academic institutions, professionals. My whole working career, man, my whole working career, I was in advocate for change and advocate for uh, people recognizing uh, that things can always be a little better. Um, and mentoring, um, mentoring um, young people coming into the, the, the workplace. Um, and that, that's, that's as a result of certainly it, the, the theme was uh, uh, working with core and those folks because that was invaluable but the germination of that seed was uh, the John Hay thing because it was us, us students it wasn't uh, someone behind the scenes uh, you know manipulating us into doing this this was this was students students expressing themselves mm-hmm. and, and so that for me that was the germination of the seed from uh, core and, and AACP and hopefully uh, if, if 
others took that seed for them and planted it in some other places, um, then that's, that's the, the, the real positive coming out of that, that, that protest or that walkout. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording right now, by the way. Okay.